Hey guys, Steph here. So I am doing the last little bits on my Python course and I'm getting a little bit into the theory of object-oriented programming. I don't want to go too deep because Powerful Python 3, the course, is a beginner's course so I don't want to get too deep down into that rabbit hole of object-oriented theory. Trust me. That would not be good for a beginner's course. Anyhow, so I'm just going over things I always do my research, make sure everything is cool. You see, when you've been doing something for as long as I have, I've been programming since the 90s, you take things for granted. And sometimes it's good to look around to see how other people are characterizing things, to see how people might be finding certain aspects of programming a little confusing and so on, because again, you lose... You lose touch with that if you've been doing it for so long. So that's what I do. Anyway, so I was just bouncing around, checking stuff out. So I was on Wikipedia, and for whatever reasons, I come across this, this uh, article where they're looking at the object-oriented programming and specifically the criticisms of object-oriented programming. Now, don't get me wrong. I think object-oriented programming is something you have to learn and something that's very useful. But I think that there are a lot of mechanisms, if you will, in object-oriented programming that uh, should only be used very sparingly, if not at all. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of inheritance. I'm not saying that you shouldn't use inheritance. I'm saying that it should be used very, very sparingly only on base objects. I talked about this in another video. That being said, so I, I like this line here on Wikipedia from this guy, Steve Yegi. I have no idea who this guy is, but this just made me laugh. And if any of you have done any extensive object-oriented programming, you will probably laugh at this too, knowing exactly what this guy is talking about. But it sounds funny, so let me read it. Oops, that was the wrong quote. Here it is, right here. This is funny. The problem with object-oriented languages is that they've got all this implicit environment that they can carry around with them. You wanted a banana, but what you get was a gorilla holding the banana and the entire jungle. The nerd in me finds this extremely funny and hilarious. Again, if you've done object-oriented programming, you know exactly what the uh, author is. I guess this is Joe Armstrong is uh, trying to say here. And I'll put it in layman's terms, just in case you guys are not experts at object-oriented programming. The tendency in object-oriented languages, C-sharp, Java, and, and many others, is that they create overly complex code bases. And they try to implement all kinds of different aspects. They, being coders, have a tendency to want to implement or use all kinds of capabilities are built into an object-oriented language, even if it's not really necessary. It reminds me of something that happened to me many years ago, eons ago, when uh, the dinosaurs roamed the earth. And I was called in by a client, a new client. They wanted to update a web app that they had, and it was written in PHP. Now, this is old school PHP, dirty PHP, PHP that was just functional. It had very little to no object-oriented capability. In fact, this was pre-PHP 4. PHP 4 was the first step, if you will, when PHP started becoming. It wasn't fully all OO at that point in, in PHP 4, but PHP 4 had implemented a whole bunch. They added in a whole bunch of object-oriented object capabilities, although it wasn't fully OO. PHP didn't become fully OO until version 5. Anyhow, so this was like a version 3 PHP app. So it was all just a bunch of functions. And so I come into the gig and they wanted me to uh, add to this app. And it wasn't a very big app, it wasn't very complex. But uh, so nonetheless, being a Java guy, I was like, no, 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 we should do this in Java. We'll rewrite in Java, it would be much better. But the client insisted that, no, no, we already have this in PHP. There's no way we're going to be start. We're going to start rewriting things in Java. Why spend the money twice? So whatever. It was a good gig. I was making good money. So I said, okay, I'll do it in PHP. At this point, this is the 90s, I had not written PHP yet. So I said, whatever, I'll just learn PHP. So I started learning PHP. Now, as a Java programmer, fully immersed in object-oriented programming uh, paradigms and so forth, I was appalled. I was appalled 
at the simplicity and the lack of OO-ness in PHP at the time. And uh, But I, I pinched my nose and I went forward with the project because I was getting paid and that's what the client wanted. So whatever. And I said to myself, you know what? Yeah, I'll learn PHP. So uh, I learned PHP. And uh, how long did it take? I got used to it within a few hours. And though it was a primitive language at that time, don't get me wrong, PHP today is totally different. PHP today, PHP 7 is very, very, very robust language. It's, in my opinion, it's right up there with all the other object-oriented languages. It's not as pretty syntactically as, uh, as Python or Ruby, but it's, it's, it's still a very capable language. And for web apps, I say go PHP. That's my overall opinion. Anyhow, but at the time, PHP 3, 3X, I don't know what it was. It was just, uh, it was really primitive. It was just a functional language, functions-based. But here's the big story. After having made the mods and the additions to the app that the client wanted based on using PHP 3, it turned out to be very, very, very illuminating, if you will, for me. It really taught me something. And what it taught me is that don't get caught thinking in one way. Functional programming can be extremely effective in that it's very, very fast in, in the writing because there's so much less code. Oh my, there's so much less code to write. That is the problem. Well, it's part, partly a problem with Java, but object-oriented code by its very nature is heavier. You have a lot more code to write to get the things done. Now, don't get me wrong. You should still be, in my opinion, using OO quite a bit in today, but sometimes quick and dirty functional programming like old school PHP just gets the job done quick. And I remember I was telling my, my brother this, who was a big Java programmer, and he was appalled as well. And I, I said to him, I said, buddy, I said, you know, yeah, it doesn't have proper error trapping, doesn't have try catch blocks. PHP didn't at the time, it does now, but it didn't at the time. And it was quite primitive in that regard, but you know what? To get something done, it only takes 500 lines of code instead of 10,000 lines of code. So yeah, I don't have as sophisticated uh, a code base as the Java version would be or the C Sharp version would be, but you know what? I have 10%, less than 10% the code, right? I got like 5%, 10% or something like that to get the same job done. I remember the first thing was illuminating at the time to be able to send an email from Java, Java web, using a servlet, you're looking at a page of code to send an email. And uh, a servlet is a specialized class, is a class, a special class in Java, specifically designed to uh, build web apps. Anyhow, so to write Java code to be able to send an email at that time required about a page of code, whereas PHP was one line. So I said to myself, it's pretty easy to debug one line of code versus 500 lines, right? So anyway, that's uh, interesting. So uh, I decided to do this vlog just because you wanted a banana, but what you got was a gorilla holding the banana and the entire jungle. Yep.